Welcome to drywalltechnique.com. I'm Layla and I'll be introducing you to Series 12, Plaster Arch, and Ceiling Repair. William has already had the plaster tested for asbestos, and there is no trace, so at this time William has chipped out all the loose plaster and is now pre-filling the area with a hot mud compound. Since he has mixed a 5-gallon bucket at one time for this massive pre-fill, he has chosen to use a 90-minute hot mud, to allow him plenty of time to complete his pre-fill, without wasting time, or material. Before starting a project like this, you need to lay down plenty of floor protection like cardboard, 4 foot wide contractor paper so you can protect the floor from plaster dropping and denting a surface, or wet material drying on your finished floors. Have plenty of 1 mil painters plastic with green or blue painters tape, they are less likely to pull the finish off stained or naturally finished wood cabinets, baseboards, crown moldings, or floors. Try to think three steps ahead of each of your processes, taking a mental image to foresee a potential problem. This is the arch before William started the demolition, the damage is extensive, but not a total loss. The thickness of the plaster varied quite a bit, so using quarter inch thick drywall wouldn't have worked, so after removing all the loose plaster, make sure the wood lathing strips are nailed tight, and secure before applying your hot mud coat. You will want the consistency of your hot mud compound to be thick, but workable. You want the hot mud compound to be thick enough, so your ability to apply it, without running, and to be able to be pressed between the lathing strips without running out. But you want the compound thin enough that it's going on even, not wavy, with no clumps. You will learn the feel of using these powdered compounds, how to mix it, how much water you need to use, for each application you make. It just takes just a little time to learn how to use hot mud compounds for your benefit, you wouldn't want to use the regular all-purpose compound for this initial pre-fill, it would take forever to dry, and it would not dry hard enough for what you need. At this point, William has applied the second coat of hot mud and using his 12-inch knife to scrape the hot mud between the coats to remove any lap lines or marks. William is now applying a plaster's mesh, and he is slowly laying the plaster's mesh into a thin coat of hot mud compound. The consistency of this hot mud is much thinner so he can wipe the plaster's mesh into the hot mud compound without any uneven areas. When wiping the plaster's mesh down, start in the middle and work your way out. Make sure your plaster's mesh doesn't bunch up or stretch unevenly. Take your time and get this coat right, or you'll be fighting it all the way through to your finish coat. Now William will start installing the flexible corner bead, there are different ways to do this, you can nail it on, which would not be advised in this application, you could staple it on, which would not work here, you could use a spray adhesive, but that wouldn't be our first choice. Nailing into old plaster can do more damage to your project, the plaster could shatter, so I would steer clear from doing any of these. As I said there are different ways to install this flexible corner bead, those other ways of installing this flexible corner bead are all good ways, but you need to pick those if you were nailing on flexible corner bead over drywall, and wood framing. William has chosen to use a 90 minute hot mud compound, mixed to a thin consistency. If you chose this method, you'll need to have your hot mud relatively thin to work with the fiber tape. Fiber tape has smaller holes in it, so your compound needs to be thinner to be able to be wiped down properly. If you end up doing this kind of work for a living, you will need to develop a critical eye, to be able to look at a wall angle and see that it's not running straight, to be able to look at a wood framing job and see where you're going to run into problems. Such as, if a wall isn't running plumb, and if you put an 8 foot level on it, you can see your finished job would be in jeopardy. If the inside of this arch wasn't framed right, and the inside of the arch is thicker on one end and thinner on the other, you would put your corner bead on it and the inside of the arch could be off by an inch. You can't fix that with corner bead. William has now mixed up another, smaller batch of 90 minute hot mud compound. 
It's a thicker consistency, and I should mention that you need to thoroughly wash your drywall pan and knives between each new batch of hot mud compound you make. If you don't, the residual compound or any dirty water, residue, can cause your new batch of hot mud compound to harden faster than you want it to. This brings me to one of William's trade secrets, over the last 35 years of accumulation of knowledge, and the skills to be considered as a master of his trade. Just say you were working on an area of your project, and you couldn't wait 90 minutes for your hot mud to set up so you could go over it again. You're all out of 20 minute hot mud, what would you do? What if I told you there was a trick to make that 90 minute hot mud compound set up in 10 minutes? Would you like to learn this trick? And it has nothing to do with old dirty water from other hot mud batches. This trick is tested and has been used for over the last 20 years by William, and the hot mud compound always sets up evenly, without any problem. If you are interested, please like this video, subscribe and let me know you enjoyed this video below, and let me know that you want to know the hot mud trick. Leave me your email and I will reply to you with this free trade secret. That's not too much to ask, is it? William is now applying his first coat of hot mud compound on the arch, he is using 90 minute hot mud compound for this process. All the following coats will be done with an all purpose compound. When applying this hot mud, you can use your 6 inch knife or your 8 inch knife. The remaining coats will be done with a 12 inch knife. Remember, on your final pass with your knife, go back and clean the compound off the corner bead, while the compound is still wet. You should be doing this between each coat you apply, be careful not to gouge the corner bead with your sharp knife, this is even more important to watch out for when you start working with metal tape on corner bead, which is covered with paper. And when you are working with bullnose, metal tape on corner bead, you have to make sure the curved part of the corner bead is always clean, and never with a buildup of the compound on it. Or even worse, the curved paper is cut or marred. If you're not putting texture on that surface, then that bare paper corner is your finished product. At this time I need to point something out, if you didn't notice, the fat edge William left on his final pass on the corner bead, well there is a reason for that, on the top of the wood trim piece, William popped a blue chalk line to the far right corner, you can't see it from this angle but there is a deep dish between the arch and the corner to the right. William set his 6 inch knife to the blue chalk line, this is to fill in the dished area that is between the arch and the far right corner. After William is finished with his first coat on the arch, he will drop back and use a 2 foot darby to float this area flat. William didn't want to run short on his hot mud compound batch, to where he would have to mix a new batch to finish the arch area. You don't want this arch with two different batches of hot mud compounds, drying at two different speeds. William is ready to tape the top angle above the arch, here, William is showing us the consistency of his taping compound. When taping by hand, you'll want to have your taping compound much thicker than if you're going to be pumping it into an automatic taping applicator, or a bazooka. Make sure you put a nice even, and consistent amount of compound in your angles, make sure there are no bare areas, or skips, where there isn't any compound, this will cause a blister in the tape, and bubble up after it's painted. Now William is ready to apply the drywall tape, and insert it into the angle. This is one of the trade secrets William showed us in drywalltechnique.com, series 2 taping and finishing. Watch how William folds the drywall tape, and creases the drywall tape between his fingers, and then pulls the tape with one hand while holding the other end firmly. This will pre-crease your drywall tape before you insert it into the angle, and this technique will give you a very nice sharp angle, and it will make it much easier to wipe down. As we covered in drywalltechnique.com, series 2, taping and finishing, the importance of pre-creasing your drywall tape before you insert it into the angle. Use your 6 inch knife, and guide your drywall tape into the angle. Press the drywall tape gently into the taping compound, you don't want to create too much pressure, where it presses all the taping compound out from under the drywall tape. 
After you have the drywall tape inserted into the angle, now you're ready to wipe it down, start in the middle of the angle and work outward. Make sure the drywall tape isn't bunching up, or wrinkles are appearing, be careful not to apply too much pressure you cut the inside of the corner with your 6 inch knife, or that you press so hard on the drywall tape that you wipe all the compound out from under the drywall tape. Take your time, you will get the feel of how much pressure to use. As you can see, we have a nice, clean sharp angle, which after it receives its finished coat will give you a wonderful final product. Now we are applying the first coat of all-purpose drywall compound to the plaster's mesh, look at the consistency of the compound, and how he is applying it. William is giving this damaged ceiling patch area a full and even coat. From corner to corner, when applying the all-purpose drywall compound, make sure when loading up the ceiling, you only coat an area that you are comfortable handling at one time. Apply the compound with long even strokes, keep it as level as possible, you don't want to have a lump to sand off later when it dry. As you can see, William is working a 3 foot by 3 foot area at a time, watch how he loads up the ceiling area, as he is working with his 12 inch knife. He's making sure the compound he is applying is level, and even, he is also making sure he is getting all the way into the angle, and into the corner before he removes any compound. When William gets to the point of making his final pass on his first coating area, he will be using his 12 inch knife to make it easier for you to follow. But if you would like a smoother final pass on your first coat, use a 22 inch trowel to make that final pass, it will help the ceiling to have fewer lap lines, and it will help with a better finished product, with possibly less sanding being involved. If you're adventurous and have an extra $35 for the 22 inch trowel, you should try it. At this point we have sped up the process, we sanded our first coat with 150 grit sandpaper, using a sanding pole, then we applied our second coat over our project, we sanded that out with 150 grit sandpaper. Now we are at the point where William is applying the final coat of all purpose compound. This coat will be a skim coat over the entire project, there is a lot of repetition in all of these coats, so we didn't want to bore you by showing you the duplication of each coat. After this skim coat is completed, everything should be very smooth to the touch. William is in the process of finish sanding, he first pole sanded the project with a 220 grit screen, if you're using a new sheet of 220 grit screen you'll need to rub it on a metal ladder, or the metal brace of the ladder, something to wear it down a little before you use it. If you don't it will leave grinding marks on your work. After pole sanding, you'll use a fine, extra fine sanding sponge and a 250 watt halogen, or a 500 watt halogen to do your hand sanding. This part is extremely important. Do not skip, or change this process. 
We hope this series was helpful, and will enable you to proceed with your project with confidence. If you enjoyed this video, could give us a like and possibly share this video with some of your friends that are taking on a project like yours. If you have any questions or remarks please leave them below and we will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this video all the way through, you are truly wonderful. Take care and bye for now. We have other video series coming out soon, so please subscribe so you don't miss out. Take care.